Father in heaven, we're thankful today for your many blessings as you have bidden each one of us to come to this midday power surge. Today, we pray for our greatest need, revival and reformation in our souls. May we be found vigilant in these last days and not to be self-centered, selfish, but also to reach out to others that they too may receive and may be prepared. Bless us now, we pray. Thank you for peace, comfort, and victory throughout life's trials is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey as we are anxiously awaiting the second coming of Jesus Christ. Welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Kirk, Anthony, Dwayne, Richard, Matthew, Bernard, Zinnia, Dolores, John, Chris, Henry, Paul, Denise, Sean, Rocky, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Friends, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been involved in a fire drill? If so, send in the amens. Safe to serve international, those of you who are live. Whether in school, maybe at school, maybe on the job, or you are going for certain certification and you had to go through a fire drill, send in the amens, my friends. This is going to be our theme because we are told right now the COVID-19 crisis, the COVID-19 with its policies was simply, is simply a fire drill for climate calamities. You heard me correctly. Now let's read that. Not from some common person down the road, some little Joe down the road. This is from the United Nations official, the one who sits over, I believe, the UN Global Sustainability. Do you remember those goals for 2030? Without further ado, take a look at this. Here it is, my friends, June 15th, 2020. The headline reads, COVID-19 pandemic is a fire drill for effects of climate crisis, says whom? Not Andrew Henriquez. No, says the UN official, Lisa Kingo. All right, friends, and notice carefully, when you think about a fire drill, what's a fire drill? Look at this, my friends. A fire drill is a method of practicing how a building would be evacuated in the event of a fire or other emergencies. In most cases, the building's existing fire alarm system is activated and the building is evacuated. You could read the rest of that. Do you know what's startling, my friends? We can, we can use the word lockdown synonymously with a fire drill in many cases. Now, let's apply that to the COVID-19 pandemic, the COVID-19 lockdown. It's a fire drill for the climate calamities. And we know, based on scripture and based on the spirit of prophecy, that Sunday, Rest Sunday, worship by law, will be enacted in all lands, beginning in America, to combat calamities, to combat pestilences, to combat an economic meltdown. We are here, my friends. I want to ask you a question. And I want to speak specifically to the scoffers, the critics, the cynics. It's a possibility there is hope for such people. 
The Bible tells us many people are hypocrites. They can tell the signs that's happening in the atmosphere. They look at the clouds, Matthew 16, verse 1 through verse 3. They can see it's going to be foul weather. A storm is coming and they prepare. And yet the signs show us the mark of the beast is near. The second coming of Christ is even at the doors, yet many of them are lackadaisical spiritually. Let me speak to you all now. I want to ask a question. When a fire drill is being enacted at a school, on, on a business premises, do the students, the faculty, the staff members, the employers, the managers, the administrators, you get the point. Do they all say, why this alarm? Why do we have to go through this? There will never be a fire at the school. Never be a fire at this workplace. Do they say that? No, friends. It's policy you go through a fire drill. And by the way, do fires happen at schools? Oh, yes. Do fires burn down office buildings? Oh, yes. So they go through the fire drills just in case there is a fire. They don't scoff. Let's take that now. Do you know some of these scoffers? went through fire drills at school. Many of these cynics went through fire drills on the job and yet in a spiritual context. When they hear God's faithful watchmen analyzing current events as they are fulfilling prophecies, showing the mark of the beast is near, get ready, how do they react and respond? Those preachers are mere alarmists. The mark of the beast, what is that? On one hand, we don't believe that. On the other hand, it will never take place now. They are hypocrites based on scripture. Let's get back a fire drill. The students, those in the school, faculty, staff, those on the job, employers, employees, they act in each fire drill as if that fire or that fire drill could be the actual real fire. Does it make sense? In the spiritual sense, how must we treat and react to these current events that we know are fulfilling prophecy? Talk to me, Safe to Serve International. We must react and respond as if this current event may be the actual one to drive us into the enforcement of Sunday rest by law. Anything otherwise, any other response, anything contrary-wise, it's hypocrisy based on scripture. Does that make sense, my friends? By the way, not only should there be fire drills at schools, fire drills at uh, places of businesses, but also fire drills in your home. You never know what may happen. At your home, in my home, we have dry run just in case there is an intruder. Intruder, I'm sorry for you if you come knocking on my door. Or if there is a fire, we have drills in this home. Hillary, Christian and Faith and others in our home. Look at this, my friends. Let's get back. This says COVID-19 pandemic is fire drill for effects of climate crisis, says UN official. One sentence read words. It says the coronavirus pandemic, quote, is just a fire drill for what is likely to follow from the climate crisis. Pause right there, friends. What happened during the policies to combat COVID-19. Did we encounter lockdown? Safe to serve international. Yes, we did. I want to ask you a question. Was there a restriction on travel? Yes, there was. Were borders closed? Not only international borders, but also domestic borders. Traveling from state to state. Were there sentiments regarding mandatory vaccination 
carrying immunity cards. Yes, here's a big one. Was there food rationing? Yes. Was there a rationing of food and supplies? Yes. What's coming, my friends, since this is just a fire drill for climate calamities? A second big one. Was there a restriction on buying and selling on certain days? Oh, yes. By surname? Yes. By gender? Yes. License plate numbers? Yes. And also social security numbers? Yes. It's a dry run, a fire drill. And also we saw to combat COVID-19, mandatory contact tracing. And if you refused to go along with the contact tracing, you were also forced or forcibly removed from your homes. Have you forgotten this Safe to Serve International and first-time viewers? And then another big one to combat COVID-19. Businesses were closed. Do you remember that? Yes, churches were closed. Have you forgotten that? And let me add, there was no Sunday shopping. Do you remember that, my friends? No Sunday shopping. And in many places, shopping was done on God's seventh-day Sabbath. It's a dry run, my friends. Hmm. Let's move on. And yet people are saying there's no Sunday law coming. Oh, they are the ones who are deceived. It's a sign of the last days. Scoffers shall come in the last days. Look with me, my friends. Now, this same article goes on to connect three primary things. Racial tensions, climate crisis, and pestilences. Look at this. Lisa Kingo said from the UN, she said... There were very, very clear connections between the COVID-19, that's pestilence, climate crisis, that's calamity, and also Black Lives Matter protests around the world. Do you know what came to my mind as I read those three? Okay, Safe to Serve International, first time viewers, what comes to your mind? What scripture? COVID-19, pestilence, climate crisis, earthquakes in diverse places, Black Lives Matter protests. What comes to mind? Okay, Richard. Repentance, 777. It's Matthew 24, Samara, Beverly, Dynamite, Selma, Benjamin. It's Matthew 24. The world is connecting all three wars among nations nationality do you see it calamities earthquakes in diverse places pestilences covid19 jesus said this would be a sign of the last days may i add many of the policies to combat covid19 in this so-called fire drill dress rehearsal dry run many of those policies have Many of those policies still remain on the books in many states. Legislature. Look at this, my friends. Let me tell you something. Notice who are the ones talking. The UN officials. All right. And what are we told, my friends, in Great Controversy, page 589? The very same ones who claim that they want to heal our maladies. Racial tensions, calamities, climate change, pestilences, red words, first paragraph, they are the ones that will bring, underscore bring, bring disease and disaster. It's talking about modern times, the United Nations. Look at that, my friends. A prime example, the United Nations apologizes for Haiti's cholera epidemic without noting the United Nations were the ones that brought bring 
GC589 brought Fox News, brought the disease. Pause the video and read that, my friends. The same ones who are acting as benefactors of the race. They're the ones, and also physicians, they're the ones who are bringing disease and disaster. Now, friends, let's get back to that fire drill article. It's my chief witness this afternoon for midday power surge. In the same article, it went on to say that we must expect emergency after emergency, calamity after calamity. That is a direct quote from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Hold on to this, my friends. Look at this, my, this is another article. Look at this, a second witness. This is NBC, March 27th, 2020, from Adam Frank, professor of astrophysics at the University of Rochester. Headline, coronavirus and climate change, the pandemic is a fire drill. For our planet's future, what does the Bible say? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Come back to the article, Christian. The tagline says below the title, it says, Climate change will mean one emergency after another, year after year, as heat waves, floods, fire, and storms blow cascades of failures through our systems what quotation comes to mind my friends when you hear heat waves floods fire storms it's great controversy page 589 the chapter entitled the impending conflict look at this my friends and we're told now watch this carefully you remember we read where it says emergency after emergency one succeeding another look at this great controversy page 589 satan is working in the laboratory of nature there it is my friends working through his human agent and what are we told on the line section it says when he satan was suffered to afflict job job how quickly flocks and herds Servants, houses, children were swept away. One trouble, one emergency, one crisis succeeding another as in a moment. Write this down, my friends. Safe to serve international. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Notice verse 9 all the way through into Job chapter 2. When one servant came to Job, explaining a crisis had hit. While he was yet speaking, another one came. While the second was still speaking, a third came. While he was speaking, a fourth came. Emergency after another. And James chapter 5 verse 9 through verse 11 tells us the account of Job is an end time account and what is coming next my friends let me tell you something COVID-19 was not it it's a fire drill look for more and more frequent and disastrous calamities there it is then what comes my friends Sunday observance by law it's right there on the screen my friends Sunday rest by law when I ask you a question, back to my fire drill theme. When there is a fire drill, it is to show all the people in the school, the people at this business location office, the people in this home, are they prepared? Should there be an actual, literal fire disaster? And when there is a fire drill, there are three options. Write down these three options. One, a fire may never actually take place. 
And that is a reality. Number two, the fire, actual fire, may come tomorrow. The third option, the fire may actually come today. There are reports. A fire drill was done in the morning. And before the business was let out, fire came that very same day. Three options, my friends, based on prophecy. The first option is void. Write an X and cross out that. Because based on prophecy, fire is coming. Look at my application. Fire in the sense of the mark of the beast crisis. That's number one. It's coming. Fire in the sense, yes, Christian. Fire in the sense of the seven last plagues. I'll confirm that. And the third, fire in the sense of fire and brimstone from heaven. The second death, Revelation chapter 20. Verse 14 and verse 15. So fire is coming, my friends. So while we are talking about the fire drill, COVID-19 for the calamities, I'm showing you the prophetic fire drill. Every single day, you and I must be ready. Asking ourselves, am I ready? Should the mark of the beast be enforced now? Am I ready? Should the seven last plagues fall now? Am I ready? Should the second death, fire and brimstone, fall right now? In other words, man has his fire drill. God has a daily fire drill. If that makes sense, send in the amens, my friends. Safe to serve international and first-time viewers who are live. A fire drill. Now, the second options. All right. The fire could come tomorrow or the fire could be today. All right, friends. Tomorrow could mean tomorrow literally, 24 hours. It could be 40 hours. It could be a month from now. It could be a year from now. It could be a decade from now. Based on prophecy, a Sunday law could come tomorrow. Third option, a Sunday law could be enforced today. When must we be ready, my friends? Today. The spiritual fire drill. With that in mind. Do you know, my friends, in the time of Job. When was Job prepared? When was Job prepared? Go to Job chapter 1 with me. As I swing, segue into hard preparation. Because, friends, yesterday, during midday power surge, we covered the golden altar of incense, the altar of prayer, the altar of power, the altar of comfort. This is midday power surge. All right, friend. And Job, we're told, was found in prayer. Write down Job chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 6. Job did not know if the crisis would come that very day. But he was prepared. A spiritual fire drill. And my friends, did fire fall in the book of Job? Go there with me. Job chapter 1. Let me show you something. Job chapter 1. Look with me at verse number 16. The reporter came to Job and said, The fire of God is falling from heaven and has burnt up sheep, servants, and I only am left. I only am escaped to give the report. Fire fell. Job was having a daily fire drill. Job did not know that day was coming. But what about Job's children? Were they having a spiritual fire drill? No. They were drinking liquor, alcohol, fermented beverage. They were having a party in the house, literal home, in the church, having a party, my friends. What happened? They were overthrown in verse number 18 through verse number 19. A spiritual fire drill, my friends. Now notice, today I want to address not the golden altar of prayer 
But the golden censer, put that point down, the golden censer. And look at the connection, my friends. We are told the censer had incense. The incense came from the golden altar in the holy place. Look at the screen, my friends. In the holy place. And the golden censer was brought into the most holy place. All right, friends, write this down. What does the incense represent? Incense, prayer. Psalm 141 and verse number 2. Incense, prayer. Whose prayer? Write this down. Our prayer. Secondly, God's prayer. Christ's prayer for us. I will confirm that. Look with me now. Exodus chapter 35. The Bible tells us the golden censer was used on the day of atonement. On what day, my friends? On the day of atonement. The day of atonement means the day of judgment. That's chapter 35 of Exodus. Put that down. All right, my friends. Put down Leviticus chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16. The Bible tells us in verse 12 through verse 30. Put it down, friends. We're told the golden censer, amen, was used on the day of atonement. Put that down, friends. And now notice, watch carefully. The golden censer was used to make atonement for the people. That was the number 16. Put it down. Numbers chapter, I keep saying yes. Numbers chapter 16, verse 46 through verse 50. The high priest made an atonement for the people. The high priest stood between the living and the dead. Put it down. So that the people would not receive the wrath of God. The censor was used for the people not to receive the plague. That's Numbers chapter 16, verse 47 through verse 50. Now what comes to mind? Since all the books of the Bible meet and end in the book of Revelation, says Acts of the Apostles, page 585. My friends, what says Revelation chapter 14? Is your wrath coming? Is your fire coming? Write that down. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, the same shall receive, what my friends? The wrath of God. What is the wrath of God? Chapter 15, verse 1. The seven last plagues. Chapter 16, verse 1 onward, the seven last plagues. So what is Christ now ministering with? The golden censer. Does it make sense? His prayers for us. He's standing between the living and the dead. So we do not receive the wrath of God, the seven last plagues. By the way, what is in Revelation 14, verse 10? The wrath of God. Then it says, uh, fire and brimstone. Revelation 14.10. And what says Revelation 20? Verse 14 and verse 15. Fire and brimstone. The second death, my friends. So when should we be having the spiritual fire drill to get ready for the mark of the beast? To get ready for the first and second death. Where it's now. Put this down. In the golden censer was placed incense. Place what? Incense. Where did the incense come from? The Bible tells us the incense came from the people. Write down Exodus chapter 35. Powerful point. Verse number 5 through verse number 8. The people brought the censer. The people brought the incense for the censer. So notice, the people brought incense. That means the people must pray. 
Christ has the censer with incense, which also represents the prayers of Jesus. So who are the ones to pray, my friends? We must pray. And then Christ adds his prayers to our prayers. And his prayers of righteousness ascend to the Father. And the blessings descend. His way. His time. If that's clear, my friends, send in the amen. Look at this. Revelation chapter 8 is clear on this point. The Bible tells us in chapter 8 of Revelation, verse number 3 to verse number 4, the Bible says there's an angel. And what is in his hand? A golden censer. And much incense was given unto him. Who is this angel? Who is this messenger? Why? Because angels represent messengers. It's Christ, Michael, the archangel. Which angel can intercede for us? Only Jesus, my friends, the messenger. And the Bible says he sends up his incense, his prayers, as the prayers of the people ascend to him. We have to pray. Our prayers mean nothing unless Christ mingles his prayer, his righteousness. Look at this statement, my friends. It's on the screen. Page 353. Of patriarchs and prophets. Come back now, Christian. Everybody. Revelation chapter 8 now. The Bible tells us. Once we pray. Incense. And Christ blends his prayers. With our sincere prayers. And they ascend to heaven. The Father. And the blessings come down. Verse number 5 now says. Jesus takes the censer. And what does he do? He fills it with fire, fire drill, fire off the altar, and cast the fire down to the earth. What happens now? There are voices, thunderings, earthquakes, lightnings, thunderings. Write that down. What comes to mind? Voices, earthquakes, lightnings, thunder. What comes to mind? There are many applications. The first one is Mount Sinai. Exodus chapter 19 and 20. The Ten Commandments. So those who pray, incense, and Christ prays, He fills us with His righteousness. He fills us with His character. And that character is found in the Ten Commandments, again, look at the quote on the screen, my friends. It's clear. And also write down Revelation chapter 11, verse number 19. It is clear, my friends. That means it's a spiritual fire drill. We must be prepared to receive a fire that's coming. A fire that Christ is going to send down. Am I prepared to receive it? All right. In the Bible, who is likened unto fire that Christ says, I will send? Come on. Safe to serve international. Who is that fire representing the Holy Spirit of God? Write down, my friends. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 4. And Matthew chapter 3, verse 7 through verse number 9. Spiritually, my friends, we must be prepared for the outpouring of the latter rain. The full power of the Holy Spirit. Fire from heaven. Last day, repetition of the day of Pentecost. Watch my statement. Spiritual Fire drill for the latter rain power. Is that point clear, my friends? Now notice, what was the spiritual preparation of those disciples to receive the fire from heaven? 
Pentecostal outpouring. They were on one accord. They were in one place. What scripture says that? Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Amen, my friends. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. So what happened to strife among them as a husband and wife, brother and brother, sister with sister? What happened to unforgiveness, malice, grudge, etc.? We must be converted, my friends. And that's why, again, I uplift the book, Steps to Christ, the chapter entitled, oh yes, my friends, Consecration. The fifth chapter, Consecration. Go to Isaiah chapter 6. What was the experience of Isaiah before Isaiah could receive fire from heaven? Do you remember Isaiah, it was told to him, the angel came with tongues and take a live coal from off the altar and place it upon his tongue. The live coal represents the censer. Write down Leviticus chapter 16, verse number 12, on the day of atonement. But what was the experience of Isaiah? What did he say, my friends? He said what? Woe is me. For I am undone, a man of unclean lips. Yes, my friends. And I live in the midst of a people with unclean lips. But he saw Jesus first. Step to Christ. God love, loves, God's love for man. Then we can see our need. Then we want to surrender. Then we can become consecrated. Then we can do aggressive, effective evangelism. Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? It's time for the spiritual fire drill, my friend. Now let me close. Go back. Revelation chapter 8, verse number 5. Jesus will one day cast down the censer. Cast down fire. Cast down the censer. What does that mean? Since the censer represent intercession, casting down the censer, it means the close of probation. Look at this. Verse 5, chapter 8 of Revelation. The censers cast down. There were voices, thunderings. Write this down. Lightnings, earthquake. That scripture is connected to Revelation chapter 16, verse number 17, verse 18. When Jesus says, it is done, what happens in verse 18? There were voices, thunders, lightnings, and a great earthquake. A dual application, Revelation 8. Lattering power, the censor fires cast down. The second application, the close of probation. Then comes fire, my friends, the seven last plagues, and the second death. Am I ready, my friends? Spiritual fire drill. Are you ready? That's why we have come to midday power surge. In the book, Early Writings, I close. Page 279, blue words, God's faithful people have now received the latter rain. Now they give the last great warning. Now, next picture, an angel with the writer's inkhorn reports to Jesus. The sealing work is over. Red words, then I saw Jesus. Red words, throw down the censer. Red words, he cries, it is done. Revelation 22 verse 11, you're filthy, remain filthy still. You are righteous, remain righteous still. Every case had been decided for life or death. It's time to get ready, get ready, get ready.